How did I go from being frugal to becoming a minimalist? Here's your story, let's begin. The water's fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. Hi everyone, I'm Jackie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to go over how Dave Ramsey turned me into a minimalist. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, you've probably heard me talk about Dave Ramsey a lot. His zero base budget, which I do videos on, his seven baby steps, which we are working, and the debt snowball, which we used to get out of debt last year. If you're not familiar with the channel, you may have still heard of Dave Ramsey. You guys might be thinking, oh, enough with Dave Ramsey, right? So we're not really gonna talk about Dave Ramsey, but this is kind of how I went from being frugal to a minimalist. And it all started with discovering Dave Ramsey, starting to get on a zero based budget, and mine and my husband's journey to get out of debt. Today I wanted to go over three different things. I wanted to go over the difference between frugal living and minimalist, in my humble opinion how I switched and why I switched from living frugally to becoming a minimalist, and what are some of the areas that I become minimal in and how or what do those things in, entail. So if you're interested, let's jump in. What's the difference between frugal living and minimalist? A lot of people get these confused or they think that they're the same thing or that they go hand in hand. Currently, I would say we still are a little frugal in some areas of our life, but mo mostly we become minimalist. And the thing is, being frugal, it's more about money. It's more about stretching your dollar, trying to save money. It's almost having that fear of lack of money, that the fear of scarcity. I feel that uh, frugal living uh, yes, you're working on all this, but I feel like it's a lot more of a stressful way to live. And I have lived that way. What I would say differs from minimalist. Minimalist, it's not necessarily so much about money. It's more about your time and your energy. For minimalist, though, you can still spend money. You can still have little, like, minimal amount of things and live in a minimal space or whatever. But you might have, you might be in a space that costs more money because of the location or you might have nicer more high quality items that cost more so let's look at an item to purchase for instance if you're living frugally you're going to be concerned more about the price of it can you afford it uh, can you find a coupon for it is a good is it a good deal more frugal when you're, whereas if we're looking at it as a minimalist standpoint we might look at things like how much time am i going to have to spend working to pay for this item is it something that i really need or want do i have space for this item in my home how much time and energy will it take me to maintain this item once i do get it home so it's kind of you know you kind of see the difference between frugal living versus minimalism. How and why did I become a minimalist? Or how did I go from being frugal to minimalist? And this is where Dave Ramsey comes into play. We didn't make enough money to cover the debt we had. So on this journey to get out of debt, they, you know, Dave Ramsey does say live like no one else now, so later you can live and give like no one else. So that's what initially brought on the frugal living. It was all about cutting costs everywhere I could possibly think of, saving money everywhere I could, not no longer buying things because of frugal. It gradually led into becoming a minimalist because the more I no longer bought these items, I no longer missed them. I started realizing that I didn't need these things to be happy. Uh, and the other thing is I started changing the way I thought about things. So when I did go to get something, instead of it being so much on like, do you have the money or the cash to do it? Now it was like, well, do I really, do I really need it? Do I really want it? Uh, and for me, a lot of the times it was no, because I rather have more time and energy to spend doing things that we enjoy doing. Uh, as a family, we really like doing, we're an active 
family, we like doing things outside, we like hiking, going to the lake, the river, camping. We like doing these things which are actually pretty frugal in a sense. They're activities that don't cost a whole lot of, of money, uh, but they're just activities that I'd rather spend my time doing instead of maintaining a big thing. Having a bigger house and possessions, it was costing me more time and energy to clean these things and to maintain these things when I would much rather be out spending time with my family. So that was one of the biggest things where instead of being frugal about money, it was, you know, it transitioned into about time and energy. The other thing is we started downsizing at that time to live in the RV and we lived and traveled in our RV for, you know, six months and by living minimally, our costs were lower, but also our needs and our wants for all of these things were quite a bit less. Like I mentioned, all of this material things, I didn't need them. And what happened was, it wasn't so much even if I needed them or wanted them, it was the stress level had just gone by living a more simple life, by not uh, basically one, you know, decluttering my whole space, downsizing my whole space, relieved a lot of stress the clutter was gone so my mind was freed up a lot of times when your space is cluttered your mind is cluttered um, or if your mind's cluttered your your space will become cluttered uh, so it kind of it helped me to kind of see what it was that i really wanted by getting rid of a lot of stuff and realizing i'd rather have more time and energy versus possessions and it wasn't just about possessions and it wasn't just about saving money. Yes, when you live minimally, you may save money, but you may not save money. You can be a minimalist and not necessarily live frugally. Or you could be frugal and not necessarily be a minimalist. But that kind of leads me into the third area I want to talk about. What are the different areas in my life that we have in mine and my husband's life or our family life that we have minimized. Okay, so the first one was our expenses. And again, this came from following Dave Ramsey's, you know, getting out of debt, the debt snowball. We had got rid of unnecessary expenses as we could when we are in that state of frugal living, getting out of debt living. Um, as we transitioned over and we were no longer in debt, uh, it, we still keep our expenses low. And actually by living in a smaller space, our expenses are low. Um, however though, once we got out of debt, we did bring some luxuries back. We brought back internet, we brought back smartphones, and we brought back Netflix. When we were frugal, we had cut all of that out because we needed every penny we could to get out of debt. The other area is in our physical possessions that we minimize. And again, we downsized to an RV, uh, so that did help because it almost like forced us to get rid of a lot of things. But every time I got rid of stuff, the more I got rid of, the more weight was lifted off my shoulder. The more it was just better. And I started realizing that like, I really don't need any of, I don't need all the stuff. And that's kind of where the, Con Mari method came in. I did a I did a review on the book, The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo, and I really do think that this book goes hand in hand with minimalism. Now, some people, when it comes to their, their possessions, say their wardrobe, they may follow some of the other minimalists I've heard. They follow uh, 333, which is basically 33 of your clothes items for the season. So I think it's like what each season's three months maybe. Maybe that's how that ties in. I'm not exactly sure. I've also heard people saying 100 items, meaning they only own 100 items. I'm not to that. I'm not at that point of a minimalist where I'm counting my possessions. Instead, I use the Conmarie method to see does this spark joy? Does it bring me happy happiness? And th those are the items that I keep as far as possessions. The other thing I mentioned, um, you know, we had downsized. So the other thing minimalizing was our living space. Before we hit the road in the RV, we were living in a four bedroom house. It had a separate living room and family room area. It had a yard. We had to maintain all this space. We had a higher electricity bill. Our, our rent was actually about the same as it is for this apartment because we were further out. So our commute to our jobs was farther. Um, so that was a combination of expenses, but it was a lot of time and energy to maintain that house. 
Then when we were in the RV, it you know it had its own maintenance you know requirements. But now that we're we're back here, we're in a two bedroom apartment. My our electricity bill is cut in half from it was from what it was when we were in the house. My cleaning time is cut in half because it's such a smaller space. Uh, and because we've downsized from the RV and we've already got rid of all that stuff that just clutters us up and doesn't bring us joy anymore. So now we're in, we're in an environment that we absolutely love. Yes, we want to add to it, um, but to a minimal degree. So now it's time to add some decorating stuff. But I did do a tour you know, I did a book review on the life magic, magic of tidying up, so I'll link that in the, the description as well. I did a tour of our apartment if you want to see that. Uh, so those are, you know, those are some areas in which we have minimalized. The, another area we've minimalized is fitness and nutrition plan. My workouts consist of four, I, I, follow, I follow the primal blueprint lifestyle, and basically there's four primal four primary movements that I do and that consists of my workout. I will put a day of sprinting or you know aerobics maybe in the mix but for the most part simple. Minimize my workout. Four, four different exercises. Super simple. My nutrition. I'm down to eight, only eight items of food. Only eight types of things of food and then I just mix them and make different meals through with those eight. I made it super simple. Minimal. Was, for me, minimal is, minimalism is about making things simpler so you don't have to stress as much. So another area that we've actually minimized are our cleaning and our hygiene products. And we've actually combined, so like for hygiene for instance, I use, I have now switched to a two-in-one, so a shampoo and conditioner in one. So it saves me time in the shower because I don't have to do two separate you know, washes and rinses is one. As well, I use my shampoo as my body wash and I use it as my shaving cream. There's no need for all of these other accessories. If I want something that's nice and fruity smelling and I wanted to do that, then I could do that, but I really don't care about that. Uh, and the other thing is I use my shampoo to clean my bathroom. Soap is soap, in my opinion. Uh, same thing, the girls have their kids' soap. It's a it's a shampoo and body wash again in one, and I use that soap to clean their bathroom. In the kitchen, I use our dish soap to clean my kitchen. If it's good enough to clean the dishes I eat off of, it's good enough to clean the countertops. For our floors, I only use vinegar and water. We have vinegar in the house all the time because we cook with vinegar, so that's super easy. Uh, our laundry, I only use laundry detergent. We do not use dryer sheets. We stopped using dryer sheets a long time ago. And some of these items may have started as frugal living, but now it's more like, we don't need all of these random cleaners in our house. We don't need all of that. The only cleaner I have is glass cleaner. And I believe you can still use, I think you can use vinegar to clean the glass, and I've tried it way back when, and for whatever reason, I, it didn't work to my liking, so that's the only cleaner I have is glass cleaner. So that's what I use on our mirrors and the sliding glass door and the TV and the stand, and that's on the computer, that's pretty much it for glass cleaner. So again, yeah, so minimizing hygiene and cleaning products, one, saves you money, but again, it's you don't have all the clutter of all these random products. You have the stress of storing them or finding them, what goes to what, what do I use for what, it's super simple. The last thing that I've minimized, minimized actually, is my social circle. I reach out to only a handful of people, the people that truly, that I truly connect with, that are positive, that are bring joy into my life, that enjoy the same types of activities as as I do. So I minimized my social circle, and it has grown, it has helped us grow a lot in that aspect. So I'm just gonna recap that real quick for you. So basically, so how did I go from being frugal to a minimalist? You can thank Dave Ramsey for that. Started off as frugal living, trying to get out of debt, and it turned into minimalist living with less stress, living more simply, and being surrounded by the people and the things that you love, and having more time and energy to do the things that you want to do. So, 
I hope this resonates with any of you. Leave me a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Leave any questions. If you'd like me to go over any of those areas that I had talked about that I had minimized and maybe see some of those things or me go in more detail about those areas, leave me a comment below and I would be glad to make another video about it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.